so aside from that, um, obviously the major theme of the show is 5G. Are you sick of 5G yet? <laughs> She's thinking, how I am I a CMO. <laughs> She's thinking, Scott, what are you doing? No, Chucking no, it's okay, it's okay. Like I've actually, you know, I there is, it is so talked about. Um, Hello and welcome to a special telecoms.com podcast, live, although it's not live because obviously it's pre-recorded, but it's live, all right? Um, live from Mobile World Congress in a beer garden where we're having a beer. <laughs> all right, guys, cheers. cheers. Jamie, cheers. Oh, nothing like artificial fun, having, is there? You're having a little vape as well. <laughs> um, so we've got, obviously, Ian and Jamie here. We might have some special guests, so stay tuned. And we're just going to talk about what we've been checking out of the show. Um, and uh, have I got to do the, you can listen to it somewhere and you can watch it somewhere else. There we go. Yeah. Good. All right. So I'll start with my thing. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote a piece yesterday. What's your thing? Wow. Mm -hmm. Yesterday. Yes, well, or whenever. I wrote a piece yesterday when we were it's recording. Been, it's been a work in progress. Are you, for we're just, a are we just going to mess with the fourth wall the whole time. <laughs> um, I wrote a piece at some time prior to recording this. Um, uh, and the headline, you know, I'm struggling to remember the headline. I was out pretty late last I, night. The headline was, I, I can give it to you, I think it was yeah. something like 5G reaches its anti climax. Reaches its anti climax, there we go. Yeah. Um, and Aren't you glad you have me around? Yes, thank God. I know, and do you know what? I can't return the favour, I can't name any of the headlines you've written. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, you checked it with me, you cleared it with me and Ray, remember? Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. well, I'm always, I'm always worried I'm going to overstep that mark. And the, and the theme of it, other than just trying a bit of sort of vague double entendre, was that we've, we've finally got 5G this year. 5G's actually arrived, we've got these phones, we've got fixed wireless access, we've got bits and bobs happening. But to me, it feels like a little bit of an anticlimax in so much as everyone's like, oh, is that it? Mm. Um, and, you know, so there's the fixed wireless access thing. Nokia was talking about that. And fixed wireless access, for, for people who don't know, it's just a way of... Um, providing broadband but over wireless rather than through fibre or whatever. Um, and you can see it's quite a potentially good use case because if, if you're someone who hasn't got fibre or hasn't got any decent fixed line, you can get that. But even Nokia's no, own no, estimate... No, I'm not, I'm not convinced by it at all. I think, I think it, it is a use case, but ultimately it's, it's a cop-out for people that don't want to spend money on fibre. Fibre is always going to be better, irrelevant of how fast... Um, irrelevant how fast 5G is and you, to your to your home, fibre is always going to be better. I think it's just a cop out for yeah. for cheap cheap uh, well for BT. Um, well, BT. I suppose it's there are going to be communities that they you know they they're never going to get fibre to because um, it's just not economical yeah, to do. Yeah, so in the middle of nowhere areas. Yeah, well, they're, and they're like, already like parts using, of Wales, for example. But I don't see it as something very revolutionary because they already they already use 4G, don't they, to do that in some. Um, yeah. Right, in some some areas, so, so you're you're not, it's not well. It's not something that's. I don't think it's something that anyone's going to get hugely excited about. No, well, that was one, that's what I was leading up to. It's even uh, even Nokia's own um, estimates are something like 27 million households globally by 2024. That's not that much, is it? Yeah. So the total available market isn't that. Huge. It's like you know that the three triangles, which I think you had in your story as yeah. well, and you have EMBB, and then we've got the IoT one and the, the kind of latency one. Um, the EMBB, it's, it's sort of a subset of that, isn't it? Really, it's, it's not. It's not. Yeah. It's not really one of those or the other. It's. It's. I mean, it's not it's mobile broadband. You always think of as being people sort of running around with um, smartphones and, and gadgets like I, that. I, and I this just, is I mean, fixed line filling, isn't it? I th yeah, I think so, and I think that's, and I think they're going to use it as an excuse, and it's going to be, it's going to, it's uh, a lot of people are going to create huge problems like they did with vectoring in Germany and G dot fast in the UK. They're going to, th they're going to think it's a suitable. Um, yep. suitable replacement or a temporary solution and then all of a sudden in a couple of years time they're going to be in exactly the same position yeah. as BT is in with G dot fast now and everyone's slating them for not investing in fibre. Well I've got one more take on fixed wireless access at this stage it is I think the vendors are queuing it up as an early sort of demonstration of ROI on 5G infrastructure spend so if you're an operator if you're Verizon they've been quite big on it haven't they mm. you can actually say look yeah, we've got all the capex getting blown on 5G, but look, we're already getting this new little revenue stream. But it feels, I think, I think we all agree, it feels sort of too small to be of sort of profound significance. Yeah, yeah I, yeah, I suppose it could be additional sales if you're going into areas that have never had broadband. Yeah. 
I think it. I think it could be big, but only because people are using it as an excuse not to invest in fiber. I think if you certain telcos will take the opportunity and say, look, we're going to do this. You, you, we can't give you fiber because it's too difficult and there's no justification. I.e., they don't want to spend the money, um, and, and they'll use this as an alternative. And it, some people will be happy, but then down the line, they'll be pissed. The, the, yeah. the, the, the issue I have with it as well is that there are various technologies competing in that in that area so you know in Africa they talk about using satellite services to do some of that you also have groups like TIP you know the Telegraph yep. project with um, they've been here haven't they Telegraph yep. uh, and there's something that Deutsche Telekom has been showing off called Virtual Fiber which seems to be another TIP project that's kind of closely right. related and using you know very high sort of millimeter wave spectrum so it's it's kind of hard to see which one of these different options is really going to yeah. you know, really going to take off, and there's something's question marks over over all of them. Um, well, and as you point out, that the, I agree with Jamie. I think it's just going to be small, really kind of small yeah. areas. I don't think anybody's going to sensibly go and do a, a massive rollout of, of this stuff. And if they do, then I, I agree. I think there's a question mark over how long it can be around because at the end of the day, you're going to have to get to you're, you're going to have, have to, to going to have to move to fibre and. and in the countries where they haven't made that decision to do fiber to the premise, which is you know, that's happened in France, where they've been quite aggressive on it. Germany's been a market where they've got a much sort of slower evolution. Spain's it. been but very it aggressive. It will eventually as well. happen there as yeah. well, I think, in most most communities. I mean, it has to. Spain's it, been aggressive. Yeah. It has to happen, and ultimately, ultimately, if you want five G, you've got to fiber up the market anyway. Um, yeah. You know, you've got to fiber up your base stations. So indeed. Yeah, you know, I mean, this is what Nokia's message is, isn't it? It's a fiber backbone with backbone with wireless wings mm. and. You know, I, I don't believe in that sort of like final delivery to uh, over the airwaves to to the consumer. I just think it's just asking for trouble and it's very short sighted. Yeah. And I think it's come up just to sort of conclude that one. I think it's come up because we're really early days. That was why I went for the anticlimax team. We're really early days in 5G and the actual real life commercial manifestations of it are pretty limited. Yeah. And that's just one of the few that have come along. But one other thing before I before I sort of ask you guys what what your main themes have been. The other thing that interested me, and this is a more positive 5G angle, so you, you talked about that sort of triangle, the three main sort of pillars. Yeah. I love that. Jamie topping up his vape while we're doing the pod. Better than filling with his phone. Yeah. <laughs> He's always got to have some gadget on the go. Um, is uh, So we've got enhanced mobile broadband. we got IAT, which I think is not necessarily a 5G thing. It kind of takes care of itself, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, that's the curious thing about IoT is that we already have NB IoT and LTE exactly, and, and various all this other stuff. things. I think with IoT, I think with um, 5G, what it really does is give you the kind of core systems to support billions of connections. Right. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, so, I, I, I mean, I spoke to again. You don't need it as long as you got, you know, if you've got LTEA, you're, you're fine. You know, you can get. Uh, it, it, it's it's ask. It's fixing a problem that isn't there. I right. think um, a lot of the cases. I think they're searching for justification, and they, they, the operators have literally just got to be mature and own up to the fact that there is no silver bullet at the moment. Right. And I think this is part of the part of the uh, part of the reason why I'm quite relieved that it's a bit underwhelming um, yeah. at Mobile Congress this year. It's a bit just more honest, isn't it? Yeah, because ultimately it's not. You know, there, there's no massive euphoria and perhaps there's a realization that this is going to take a long time to pay yes. off it, it is it is a very long-term strategy um, no, you're completely right i agree 100 percent i i would say just to just to finish off um my bit the what the, the most interesting part of those three core sort of use cases 5g for me is the low latency one yeah which you might think initially low latency or big deal you know latency is not a big problem for me but then when you look at some of the things it enables, and I put this in my story, things like um, sort of simultaneous um, synchronized broadcast over long distances, obviously there's all the sort of robotic this and remote controlled that uh, and all that sort of thing. That's, that's the one that's ultimately, when we look back on it like 10 years, that's going to be the one that defines 5G. And the reason it's underwhelming now is that we haven't got any of that going on in yeah. the wild right now, have we? Mm. Well, that, that, I mean... If you want me to take over at this point, yeah, go for that it, neatly go for it, segues it. into one of yeah, my yeah. takeaways. Because one of my takeaways would be seeing some of the of that being demonstrated at this event and hearing people talk about it a bit more. So we're still we're still quite a long way away from that, partly because the standard's not ready. So we need the 5G that everyone's talking about at the moment is release 15, yeah. which gives you the the, the enhanced mobile broadband. Yeah. Um, which is what, a bit more 4G. Which is a bit more 4G, yeah. really. What 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 they need for the um, ultra low, low latency is. Uh, 
release 16, and, and that's that's not going to be um, that's not going to be available commercially for yeah. a couple of years probably. So, I mean, they've right, already delayed it. They've already it's delayed already, it. It was and, December and, uh, 2019. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah, this is, yeah. There's a delay. Oh, there's they te- pushed that back, have they? They pushed it back there's three a, months. There's already. a three-month oh, right. technical delay, but um, but I, but I think the, the issue there is is coming up with the business cases, you know, and and, and you see some moves moves towards that um, happening at the World Congress. So Deutsche Telekom had a big demo um, on its press day yeah, where they had Claudia Nemo, who's the head of head of technology there, showing off this deal they've done with a um, manufacturer in Germany called Osram. It's apparently one of the biggest lighting manufacturers. Yeah, match, manufacturers yeah they used the to be light bulbs, didn't they? Yeah. Back, and, when, and back when we did that sort of thing. So they've, they've already got a kind of 4G deal at their factory in place with um, Deutsche Telekom and they're, right. now, they're now showing off things like moving uh, robots across the factory floor over sort of 5G connections. Yeah. And, and it's not necessarily always everybody... It's not actually always a low latency where right. they want to use it in industrial settings. It's also to do with this um, technique called network slicing, yep. where you could get much better sort of service level agreements on Indeed. things like Wi-Fi. So that's the other and, thing. And, and also gets... getting cabling out of the way. Apparently, I, didn't, I never thought about this yeah, much yeah. before. But no, they, they want no cabling on the factory floor, and if you try and use fixed line systems, and that's kind of an issue. So, so the lack of cabling, network slicing, which kind of carves out a bit of the network and gives you security and you know it's kind of service availability guarantees that you wouldn't get otherwise and then the latency and, and the other thing Deutsche Telekom was showing was actually how latency can be used in the consumer market so they have this um, tie up with Samsung um, and Niantic which I think is a gaming company oh yeah didn't they Fortnite do Pokemon Go or something and Pokemon Go they yeah. might, well, maybe not behind Fortnite but certainly Pokemon Go yeah no, and they, they're they've not, done they're not um, Fortnite they're not Fortnite. No, they've, they've, no that, you're just wrong on that one. I'm you're just t- wrong, mate. Okay, I'm wrong on that. So they've got this uh, game where it's like a virtual reality dodgeball thing that they were showing off. Cool. Where you, and you have to have, uh, the reason latency is important is because it brings things like virtual reality into it. Yes. Otherwise it ends up, you end up getting dizziness or it just doesn't, Quite. doesn't you end work up just properly. Throwing so, up all over the place. so they need 5G for that and they need investments in edge computing as well. That's the other thing that kind of goes hand in hand with 5G is getting those edge computing investments out. So they have these kind of four cities now where they're trialling this stuff in Germany and potentially it could go out a lot further. But that's the big question is whether you know whether they can find the business case to justify yeah. making the investment on a, on a broader scale. Well that's the big sort of chicken and egg thing isn't it? Yeah. But then sometimes you're not going to find out until you make the investment and exactly. put it in the wild. I mean lots of people have said that. So I've been sitting there sort of slagging off 5G against a bit, a bit of an anticlimax but lots of people have pointed out that 4G like 3G, for example, didn't really get going until the iPhone came out. 4G didn't get going until about sort of five plus years after it was launched in terms of people coming up with really useful um, uh, new applications for it. So, yeah. and that's going to be the case with 5G, but people have got to invest in the infrastructure before they can find it's that a, stuff it's, out. It's the chicken and egg thing, isn't yeah. it? And um, yeah, that's why it's quite so difficult, I suppose. But that, it, it potentially interesting because that's the thing that could really make the difference. It could <coughs> open up you know, revenue streams to the operators. It yeah. could be, you know, you hear companies like John Deere, you know, they make farming equipment, I think. But they tractors. Talk about tractors, yeah, they talk about kind of productivity improvements and using sensors and yeah. I- IoT stuff. So if it could have a, a low latency, it could have a kind of similar impact on business productivity. Then it, we can see why Germany wants to get ahead in this area, because it's yeah. obviously worried about losing out to the Chinese in the future. It was sort of going, you know, going... Um, yeah, you know, really fast apparently on, on all of this stuff. So that's that's the. That's so the I think yeah, thing. and I think that's going to be a theme of future years of Mobile Congress is exactly what you were just talking about, whether people are actually doing useful, yeah. real life stuff with it. I'm going to uh, I'm going to hand it to Jamie because I think we're in danger of him just completely danger losing, of losing interest. him. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, what's what's been uh, what's been catching your eye at the show? Um, I mean, for me, it's been. Well, the underwhelming nature of 5G, I don't think it's anywhere near as hyped this year as it was last year. Yeah. Um, which I, I quite I quite like because it's a mature it's a mature approach to a technology which is going to take decades to pay off. It's the trough um, of uh, whatever they yeah, call it. The, 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 the hype disillusionment, cycle. that Gartner That's hype cycle yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, but then the other, uh, but the edge has uh, has been. The, the the big message for me yeah, coming yeah. coming throughout the entire show. I mean, it, yeah, it, I and and I think people are starting to realise that you know to do five G properly, you do need edge to take off. Yeah. Um, you know, you need to distri- uh, distribute computing power all all around the network. You need to be able to remove processing power from devices. I mean, this I mean this is the one thing I think that's massively holding back um, the IoT space is that because. You don't have a particularly intelligent edge. 
you have to embed intelligence onto devices, and embed intelligence onto device intelligence onto devices is expensive. You know, you take you take a what could be a ten dollar product and you make it a thirty five dollar product. You know, if you're scaling that to ten thousand, that makes a huge huge impact on your financials. But if you can embed intelligence and processing power into the cloud, all of a sudden you you can you can create dumb products which can scale easily and then fuel the IoT the IoT euphoria. Um, I mean, yeah. there's, there's a great in in Hall. I think it's Hall three. There was uh, they did have an example of a dumb robot, and it was just literally a robot, but all of the intelligence was embedded in. Admittedly, it was just like a like a you know just a minor, a minor data center about three foot away. Yeah. But it illustrated the point. You know, this dumb robot could be intelligent because it's leaning on the power of the clouds and the power of wireless. So that that, that for me, the 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 edge is. Yeah, it's really important. Yeah. And, 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 and that feeds into the low latency thing as well because there's certain physical facts like the, the speed of light. Well, the, the, the latency is interesting because if, if you talk to the uh, tech guys, they say the standard itself, the release 16, actually only gets latency down a bit. It's, it's the it's edge not, investments that are the big, right, the, I the see. big difference. Okay, yeah. so it's as much the actual geographical positioning. It's the geographical of, position is the real issue. Right. Yeah. I mean, this, I mean this is the one thing someone pointed out to me the other day, actually, is um, um, <coughs> we're not going to face these massive problems in the UK that other countries are going to uh, yeah, face. Like, yeah, big countries. We're, we're yeah. small countries, yeah, so we've got a very right. dense network, and we've yeah. got actually um, sort of like a, a very, for our population size, we have a lot of data centers per square kilometer, if that makes sense. I can't think of a better way to describe it, but you know, we're, we're, they're not as spread out as they would be in North America, for instance. So the, in, pl in places like North America, the edge is going to become critically important because you know, we you're not you're not sending data three kilometers to a data center. Yeah. You're sending it, you know, yeah. three hundred kilometers, well, and then that, that that starts to make a real real I think big one difference. Of the, one of the issues is what the edge is exactly, because you know some companies talk about the edge, and they mean they mean building a few extra data centers um, so that you can move computing power a bit closer to users. But then you have this concept of fault computing, where the edge is is even closer to the device, yeah. and maybe even. The device itself in some so cases. fog is like even more distributed than cloud is what we're saying exactly what, he's, telling to, he's telling me to either vomit everywhere or Louder. speak louder saying speak up right um and uh, so yeah so if you talk to, to uh, Deutsche telecom and uh, telefonica and companies like that they're saying now that they're thinking of um you know looking at ways to use as jamie's saying use the central offices they have yeah there's a, there's a there's a big industry initiative called cord which is you know central oh, yes. re-architected re as a data center you, you, you kind of turn it into a, a kind of you know, mini data center that's closer to customers. That's actually just in your yeah, office. Yeah, and then you and then you roll out the software you need at that at that location, and it's probably not going to happen across all of the data centers, all of the central offices that um, operators have in, in some of these markets. But there's a lot of them where they look to sort of take advantage of edge computing, and then they get these get these latency benefits that you need for some of these applications. Well, I mean, I mean eventually you can have hyper, you can have you know real proper edge. You know, as soon as you can get it to a sort of that scalable and get the um, uh, and get the costs down, and you know the applications were super, super, super low latency start uh, appearing. You know, you get you know the cabinets at the end of the streets. Yeah, you know, yeah. They might, you know, you could house a little data center in there, and that that might help out for autonomous vehicles, which require that you know that you know instantaneous communication. Um, but again, it, this is a case of. You know, four, five, six, seven, ten, twenty years down the line, right. it's, it's you know it's going to take decades for for well, stuff like autonomous vehicles to actually even hit our. I'm, I'm still, I, I, think, I still think, I don't think in my lifetime we'll see autonomous vehicles. I think the risk for operators. Well, you're not getting any younger, thing. Jamie. <laughs> Well, well, certainly you got, not you two. You, 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 you two be got dead. Ten years and, max in the bank. You two be dead and buried before <laughs> autonomous vehicles <laughs> come around. <laughs> Right, on that note, so we've had, I'm going to see if we can catch their eye, I thought as we're at my World Congress um, and basically the rest of the world is all here, why don't we get some of the rest of the world involved? So uh, one of the people I want to bring on waiting patiently in the sidelines is Bengt Nordstrom from Nordstream. Bengt, uh, a, a general industry expert, is that how you describe yourself? Um. That'll do. <laughs> I normally don't actually, but, <laughs> but now when you say it, you know, why not? Well, I think you are. Okay, thank you very Certainly much. Certainly compared to me, but that's no great compliment. <laughs> um, so, Banks, you know, we, we're here on, on the Wednesday. We've all been here for sort of two or three days. What's been the major themes for you? 
Uh, I think, um, I mean, first of all, the whole Huawei uh, security, yeah. US it's the uh, elephant in the room, isn't it? I think that is basically in all my uh, operator discussions. Uh, the, and it was before this event, and it continues here. Um, and I, I, I think there are sort of different lines of thought here that are interesting. One line of thought says that, okay, she and uh, Trump will sort this out in a kind of big bundle deal. Rice, soy sauce, cars, telecom, and they will release the CFO from Canada and everything will be back yeah. to normal. And I think that's what many people are hoping for. And, and my They've certainly got to stop locking people up if they want to sort of reach some kind of middle ground, haven't they? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so, but my response has been that, um, okay, that's, let's hope for that, but uh, our plans cannot be based on that. So it has more to be based on that it can go wrong. And then I think the particular trigger here is if she is actually the CFO is actually sent to the US and she will be in a court process, that is sort of very hard for China to accept. And, yeah. uh, and you know, the measures and countermeasures that can be taken uh, because of that. And um, so uh, my recommendation to my clients when I've been meeting them here has been that, you know, hope for the best, but have a worst case scenario plan so you can you know, survive even if you if they stop uh, if they stop um, uh, delivering equipment to you. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously we, we joke about this Huawei pretty much every single week we chat yeah. about it, yeah, but yeah. it but it is big and it's definitely one of the things. Oh, are you about to say something? Mate? Well, no, I was uh, really faint. I, I didn't mention that, but I think Huawei's been like the sort of undercurrent of the whole of the whole show, really. And apparently, the, the US has even had sort of a delegation out here, sort of leaning on people in the yeah. same way that Mike Pompeo was was in Eastern Europe last week. And you mean, uh, I mean pressuring the industry in to take a harder line? There are US them. officials here trying to put pressure on Europe to knock out. Huawei. So there's not much sign. If, if we if we accept that anecdotally, there's not much sign of the Americans looking to reach this middle ground that you're hoping for. Well, I don't think they I don't think they have any intention of meeting it again in the middle ground. I think no. I think it's all a big charade that they're that they're that they're saying, look, we're we're trying to find a resolution that keeps everyone happy. And I think, you know, they're they're in the Oval Office. <laughs> Three weeks, she'll be locked up. I think I think I they think just, I think ultimately they want they want to be combative with China. I it, it could very well be so and and um, in, in this case, I think that one, the, the approach when you say that, okay, we should scrutinize the code yeah. and we should put in certification schemes that guarantees that there is no spyware, you know, that is not addressing the issue here. Because the bigger issue is, uh, is you know, global power. Yeah. And um, so that's why, but that's, you know, the first, to your question, that yeah. has been the most overriding thing. Second, is um, the, the, the fairly nice progression of 5G that we actually, when you go to all the hosts, you know, with Nokia, Huawei, Ericsson, there is actually 5G kit there. Uh, we're having the advanced antenna systems. Uh, they are ready to ship today. Uh, and there's a lot of activity here around, you know, what are the new use cases for 5G? How now? Yeah operators perhaps can make more money because when we have low latency uh, it, everything will change and uh, I, I you know I, I, it's probably very good that we have that sort of focus yeah. but you know I'm not, I'm not entirely <laughs> convinced because I'm my view is that you know we started with 18 milliseconds latency maybe 10 15 years ago and we're down to 15 20. Can we explain how much money that has generated, or is it just sort of a natural yeah. progression yeah, network which is embedded in all pricing we have? And I, I, it, I think it could be the same here. We we lower latency, we get better, you know, performance and, and use cases for 5G, but it doesn't change the direction of the industry. It's one of the issues with latencies because we were talking a bit about this before you came on, Bengt, But um, the operators are people I've been talking to point out that 5G, the standard itself, only brings a small amount of benefit actually. You've got to build out the processing power much closer to the end customer yes. and that's quite a big investment to Absolutely. overhaul these central offices or whatever it might be that, that your infrastructure is going to be. Yes, and it's, it's a new business model where you need to have a lot of new skills for it to materialize. So that, But you know, I'm sort of a little bit of engineer and I, I, I'm a bit fascinated that we can build that capacity and that we you know, can boost the performance with 5G. So that, that's a good thing. 
then perhaps the most interesting thing um, from our perspective when we've been meeting with people here is the financial market perspective uh, on 5G and telecom industry. Uh, we have met you know, pension funds and uh, infrastructure funds and, and uh, PE players and so forth and they are all saying that it's a market that needs to be consolidated. You cannot go on sitting with four or three networks in every country. Uh, we like to invest in the infrastructure you have uh, and run it as, as a utility business. So there is some sort of... Is it, is it, I mean, here's, here's an interesting question. Do you actually, I mean, I don't, I don't disagree with you. There needs to be fewer operators, especially in Europe. But do you tackle that by taking down the number of operators in each individual market? Or do you make it easier for a, a pan-European pan -European operators or multi-nation networks to exist? Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, no, that no. would... Um, well, if you separate the two, the first, to the first thing, I'm now mainly saying what the investment community tells me. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So the, so, And I, I find it a bit interesting because they are looking at our industry from a little bit of distance. They are not sort of, for them it doesn't matter if operators are successful with use cases. They just look at it from an overall perspective of how this industry looks like. And then they make that conclusion. So that's one side of it. I, I would tend to agree with them because in, in our business when we work with operator clients, it is very obvious that if you are a number four player in any given market in the world, you are subscale in your ability to invest uh, with your number one and number two competitors in the market. So it, it, and nothing in 5G changes that, in my opinion. So I, I would say like this, if we get a new regulate, or sorry, a new commissioner in Brussels later this year, um, and that is a more uh, consolidation friendly person, Mm. Uh, then we would have an avalanche of consolidation projects in Europe. Yeah, yeah. It is on the strategic agenda for so many, but it's just the the regulatory side that is preventing it. So the, the sort of economical forces in the industry are driving that direction. Yeah, yeah. The, then, yeah. then the question you ask are very relevant. You know, how how does the dynamics of the market change then when we get like? I, th I think that I think that's the best way to go about it is to make it easier for um, cross pollination between countries. Mm. You know, for instance, it doesn't have to be a pan European network, but you mm. can have, you know, uh, the, the, the 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 Nordics, for instance. All you know, Tedia has five or six uh, five or six operating country yeah. companies across Europe. Yeah. Why can't they have a, a single operating company and a single network and a single uh, reporting function just to just to boost the efficiencies there? We, I mean, we've been working with our operator clients to try to address that problem for the last 20 years. Yeah. I mean, as long as we've been running this business. And those synergies are so hard to obtain because, you know, when you run a network, the, the physical assets are in the actual market. And whether you have other physical assets in a different market doesn't make them more scalable because the people that are maintaining and operating those are you know of different nationality and they cannot travel easily between countries so the scaling effect of having more assets is is not that big from what we have seen so far um, and maybe that's sort of one of the things that you know companies like Vodafone learned over the last 15 years that they when they had that many big many assets like more than 25 uh, mobile operations, it didn't give them scale. Uh, so that's when, when, why they changed strategy and went for being fixed and mobile in a limited number of markets instead. And they think that that can deliver better results for them. So, I mean, I'm not dis you know, disagreeing completely with that what you're saying could be tried, but I, from, uh, from experience, I've seen many trying without succeeding. Right. I'm going to butt in because we could talk about this all day, but we've got another extra special guest waiting in the wings. Thanks a lot for joining Thank us. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Very Good nice to, see to you be with you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, and we're going to bring in. If if Bengt's an industry expert, then this, this is just an industry legend that we're going to bring in now. We're having beers. This is so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, gentlemen. Hello. So Mary Clark, obviously a veteran of the podcast. 
and for we have whom, our shades on. We have our shades on. Yeah, and for whom me and Ian have a hangover to thank today. I do whatever I can. So as we, <laughs> as we spoke about, as we spoke about in the preview, the the Tuesday night merry dinner is just a fixture of my world comedy. Yeah, I did get mentioned a little bit that yeah. that uh, that podcast, didn't I? And that it, Tuesday, that Tuesday elusive classic. Tuesday dinner. Hosted by, do you know you never said my last name in that podcast? You just, just simply Mary. just Mary, yeah. Mary. Right. Eventually Mary you said Mary <laughs> Synchronous, and I'm like, right. oh, at least he said where I, where I worked. You so know? <laughs> up until then, you were just some random Mary. Some random Mary. Right. Okay. That's well, right. Mary Clark Synchronous, happy now? I'm happy. I'm um, very happy. Uh, which, was, which was the best thing, the peas or the cannelloni? The cannelloni. The There's cannelloni no was the cannelloni. spectacular. Sublime. Jamie didn't make it. we got to invite you next year. Yeah, yeah. We need to show. It's good. It's really good. Just have a dinner. Ian didn't go before, and he's now. You know, just have a dinner oh, just, for, just for telecoms and light reading. So let me let me explain that I, I do this media dinner. This is the thing I do every year, and I try to invite members for the media with the help of my wonderful PR firm, CC Group. Give them yeah. a little plug while I'm sitting here. No fair play. And uh, and so we've been really successful. And so this was I don't know the fifth one I've hosted, maybe sixth. Yeah. And um, I think it's the fourth one I've been on. Well, I yeah. first met you. The very first time I met you was at one of these dinners. That is correct. Um, so now it's really good. Yeah, it's, it's good. good fun. And, and now um, they're all paying for it. It's all my and fault. And me and Rich, <laughs> so you're talking about CC Group. I was out of Rich. I ended up knocking on the head at five in the morning. <laughs> and you had, didn't you have a briefing at 10? Yeah. I, no, I had a briefing at 11. Okay. And I woke up at 10.30. <laughs> How did that go? <laughs> I just thought, God, you're so grown up and professional, Scott. I was that was really proud of myself. That you got up. <laughs> I, well, do you know what? I made it in from from literally from waking up to being at the briefing in an hour. That's not bad going, is it? No, yeah. that's pretty good actually. So anyway, enough, you don't even uh, look thrown together. You look all right. Oh, that's, you're too kind. That's pretty good. Um, so enough about my immaturity and general debauched lifestyle. Um, <laughs> what's been going on with you, Mary, at the show? What's what's been jumping out at you? First of all, the fact that it's just Wednesday is killing me. It feels like it should be like Sunday. Right. Uh, Have you still got a lot more show to go? Yeah, yeah. You know what I've got to do. Oh, of I've course. Got yeah, to do... we should talk about that. We should so, talk about that. Yeah. You know, my favorite topic. So I should talk about today we were on, uh, Glenn was on two panels. I was on one. We did... Uh, Glenn being the CEO of Synchronous. Sorry, yes. Glenn Lurie, CEO of See, Synchronous. See, it's not just me that only uses first name. I know. I know. So Glenn was on a... Uh, a panel related to how do you work with partners to create more revenue, co-creation, which was a great, great little panel, great little fireside chat. And then he was in a panel that was on blockchain, which I couldn't go to because I was on another one at the same time about AI. And I was one of, I was the only supplier vendor on stage with five operators, Vodafone, Telefonica, Elise from Finland, um, KDDI, and AT&T. And they were all just killing it with their stories on digital transformation. Everything was really good. And I was the only only vendor there, which was really cool. Um, but now I've got Women for Tech all day tomorrow. Yeah. Which is very exciting. So tell us what that's all about. So starting at 9.15 in the ministerial program area tomorrow until well, 1.15. That's, that's a punishing start on a Thursday, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I, I, <laughs> I'm, not th- I'm not thinking about it. Um, so... So I, uh, I'll get there and I get to host the whole thing. I get to be the master of ceremonies, bringing people on, taking people off, and um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited about it. It's uh, right. But I also. Oh, I'm, so you're like, you're like the. I, the I'm the MC. Running the show. I, I'm not only Mary Clark. I'm also the master of ceremonies for the whole thing. Yeah. So it's really, it's totally fun. But we've got a phenomenal list of, of speakers, and uh, but I'm also moderating now a panel, which I was supposed to be on, but now there's been a, an emergency, so the person could come so now I'm going to be um, actually doing the moderation for a panel on me too so that's going to be okay. interesting so I'm been prepping for that so yeah I think I think I'm excited you brought that, that up when we were chatting last night and I was thinking yeah. I'm pleased I'm not moderating that I think I'd get myself in all sorts of hot water yeah, I'm never letting you on stage talking about that <laughs> <laughs> chance in hell. <laughs> but but um, what time's that? Actually, I quite like. That's to see at noon. That. No, so right. noon tomorrow. That'd be great. I'll give it a go. Yeah, that'd be good. It'll be. It'll be really. I do have it. I. It's um. It's myself and. Uh, I have a woman from the industry and I have a man from the industry, so it'll be you know. I won't be one sided in the conversation. Right. So I'm, I'm excited about it. So. You're not just going to beat up the bloke. No. Good. No. Got to stand up for us, blokes. None of this men bashing thing. You can't do that. Um. <laughs> so aside from that, um. Obviously, the major theme of the show is 5G. Are you sick of 5G yet? <laughs> She's thinking, how I am I a CMO. This? I can't. <laughs> <laughs> She's thinking, Scott, what are you doing? No, Chucking no, it's okay. It's okay. Like I'm actually, I, you know, I, 
there's it is so talked about um but you guys have actually talked a lot about it i mean the edge computing stuff i mean i i mean i think that that's in the low latency i mean i i every time i start to think about that i can get my head around some of the use cases for that and there's not um as soon as you think about the data that needs to be stored closer to wherever the data is needed and the ability to compute that and having the compute power closer to the edge you know i mean i think that that works and so you know i i'm I can get there, right? And I think yeah. the low latency gets there. So I, I'm hearing more and more potential use cases. Like one we talked about today that I hadn't really thought about was you, you jump in, you got the low latency, and you have the edge, right? Doing video calling more frequently and doing it group and having a better user interface sort of jumps, you know, way above what, we, what we're experiencing today. Like, okay, that's a good use case. That's a reasonable one to think about. You know, so I, I mean, it's those, it's putting these things in context that I think it makes the difference between it. Just, you just reminded me, actually, I was chatting to um, another CC group client, they're getting some good value out of me. I, I would say. Um, called Interdigital yesterday, yeah, yeah. and I mentioned it in the story I wrote. And um, this guy, Alan Carlton, was talking about a future where basically all devices um, are just thin clients. I don't care. Because <laughs> I gotta keep it off the camera. Ah, you, 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 you vaping in Mary's face. It's quite alright. That's uh, that's. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to point out that I wrote that two years ago. What the thing I'm about to start going yeah, on about? Yeah. About, okay. deep, about everything being a home screen. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, I wrote right? that two years everything ago. Everything being a what? Everything being a home screen. Yeah. Uh, biometrics uh, identifies you and pulls your um, pulls your home screen in from the clouds, and so you know. Two years ago, was it? Look at you. Look at you ahead of the curve. Two years ago. I just like the fact that he's saying it with this sort of like, this is old news, shut yeah, the yeah. hell up. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, thanks, Jamie. Why don't you just take totally the rug out I mean, that's pretty much what I was, I was going to, I think, was really the message there. It wasn't, you know, just that brilliant. It's just like, stop gobbing on about that. Right. Nobody cares. Well, <laughs> I wrote about it two years then ago. Then I, I won't bother talking about that anymore. <laughs> uh, go on in, Jamie. You come up with something. There you go. What did, what did Alan Carl? No, Alan, Alan Carlton. Alan Carlton. So he's yes. talking, he's talking about the idea of moving processing power and, um, and memory and storage off these devices. Yeah. And, and I think that I think that's a, a really important fact that's what we were just for the about. industry. Yeah. But it's quite actually. relevant to Mary's day job as well, yeah. all this con yeah. consumer cloudy stuff that you yeah. do. That's but, right. I, but I think that's critical to evolve another aspect of the industry, which is these. And as yeah. soon as you take the, uh, the the need for a screen away from a smartphone, because everything can be a screen, or the, you take Great. away the processing power or the storage capabilities, you take away, you make these dumb devices, like I was saying before, yeah. That, yeah. that creates so many opportunities to, to, to make Something different. really weird devices yeah. that we, because we can't you don't need the processor. Now. You don't necessarily need the storage. Totally changes the form factor. You're totally right. I, and, and I'm excited to see what the hell they do because it could be entirely different than what it is today. Yeah, yeah. And, and then, you know, his voice as well. Voice yeah. control. And or that's gesture, true. Or gesture. And I don't think we talk about that mean. enough. Yeah. I don't think we talk about, you know, our natural communication, right, is still talking to people. Mm. <laughs> Although it's it almost yeah. gone. <laughs> We're almost entirely looking at our phones. But. You know, that natural language processing, the natural language generation, right? And now, yeah. I mean, it's that's what we want to do, but it's still, I think, a little further away. And I, I want to see what that turns into. Well, the, the big problem with it is that we haven't got the, actually got the data to train the models to make no. sure that these, um, uh, you know, not enough people are using the voice recognition right. or the Siri they, stuff yeah you're not you're not actually getting the core data to okay. train the algorithms yeah, yeah. to make it work so today on stage during that AI panel that I that I listened to Irene from Telefonica talked about Aura yeah. A-U-R-A have you guys yeah. seen this yeah. Yeah. yeah they've got it deployed in eight countries they're doing six million is that what they said yeah six uh oh six million <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to believe it until his phone tells him it's true. Yeah, I know. Six million conversations a day. Right. And look, as far as I'm concerned, it's a great step, right? Because we've not had anything that's been pushed out. And they're using it for customer service. They're using it for their own stuff, which is great. I mean, that's certainly better brand engagement than we typically see from a mobile operator anyway. So, you know, that's a leap forward hmm. to begin with. But I'm, I was impressed to hear, and she's making it work in all sorts of places, right? She's making it work in Brazil. She showed a great video of Rafa Nadal doing, using it, using his set-top box that's got, and it, equipped with it, buying a jersey when he's got it in his home. He's got a little screen right there on his on his table. Yep. So the set-top box is now a screen and sitting in the, right in the middle of his coffee table and he talks to it. And so he ends up buying a jersey, watching while he's watching a, a football game. 
Yeah. If they, if they, I, I mean, I was at the press conference the other day, and I think what they're doing is they're effectively going head to head with uh, Alexa and um, yeah. uh, 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 totally Alexa are. and Google Assistant to yep. create a gateway to the dig uh, to the user for the digital ecosystem. Yeah. So the similar gated model, which Facebook has done and monetized so well in social media, you could do that for the connected economy and the wider uh, the smart home and totally. the wider well, smart. Orange and Digital Telecom are trying to do it as well, yeah. aren't they, with their smart speaker? They have a yeah. similar thing. But uh, if, that, if that's what she said on stage, she was uh, she's been very naughty and lying. Because uh, because those are the figures. As right, well, of look, accurate then, now. then you know what? You blame, blame it on my memory. I tweeted it, so it could be right in my tweet. Does it, how many does it say? Six? Six, uh, six million per month. Oh, a month. And, Again, and okay, only then, six countries. Then it's me. Okay, then it's I totally don't know. me. I mean, it, <laughs> it would not surprise me if someone came up on stage and said, told the poor yeah. guy. Well, I, I could easily be my Don't take it personally, Mary. He's already undermined me on the pod. Now it's your turn. <laughs> now it's I don't my know turn. why Ian's getting Ian. off so late. It's Ian's turn. Go on. Go on, Jamie. <laughs> Listen, Mary, also, I know that you got stuff to do. I know. Um, I... I so you're busy uh, high flying, high flying me. exec. My feet are killing me, and I go to another meeting and another dinner, and yeah. it's my World Congress. That's what we do. That's it, man. Well, I so, think. Yeah, but anyway, look. Always good to see you. Great to see you again. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Absolutely. Continue to cause trouble. I will see you soon. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. All right, you all. I'll Cheers. see you. So um, yeah, we we'll just sort of wrap it up. Actually, that reminds me. You know, talking about places to go, people to see. I think it's worth doing a little. Um, post-mortem with the social side will be nice. So Saturday night, Ian. Mm -hmm. How late were we out on Saturday night? Uh, three. It's pretty late, wasn't it? We were hitting three the old-fashions, weren't we? I think we were out till about three on Saturday. Yeah, we were hitting the old-fashions. Mm -hmm. uh, Jamie, you had an eventful time getting in, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't want to get into that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> stag, you, might, you told everybody else. Well, so you might stag, well, stag, stag do well Saturday. <laughs> Missed my, miss my plane here. Yeah. Arrived Damn. late Sunday. The hotel had given away my bloody room. Yeah, how does that work? I, I mean, oh, I think it, it's we were, we were talking about it, and it's it's um, it, it's uh, it's a bit dodgy. Yeah, I, I, I I paid ahead of time for five nights. Yeah, so irrelevant so whether I'm there, it, or whether or there or not. It's profiteering, like you said last night. It's profiteering a little bit. Well, they should have phoned you at least. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I mean, the worst thing was is that uh, they said to me, "Oh, yeah, we got in contact with you." I was like, "No, I mean, it's half nine at night. I wouldn't be stood in front of your bloody hotel if you mm. got in contact with me." So, but no. Oh, I mean, so they lied to your face as yeah. well, just to add insult to injury. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I'm in a shithole now, so um, <laughs> that's that's you know good. Excellent. Good for the week. Yes. Okay. And then uh, Sunday we had the light reading slash telecom slash over yeah, slash. That was a little bit earlier, wasn't it? it was half twelve maybe that finished. Yeah, because because yeah. we had a we had a couple after. Um, and then Monday. So I've, I, as I said in the preview, I've I've realised that the pro move is to try and just take it down a notch on Monday. Yeah. Because I know there's always Mary's thing on Tuesday, and Wednesday. So tonight. Once we've done doing all this, it normally culminates in Glacier down in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the Rambla, which normally wraps up well, about normally, 2 in the morning. It starts pretty late, doesn't it? starts yeah. about 10, yeah. yeah so uh, so um, yeah. that's that. Did you guys, you, you guys went out Monday, did you? Yeah, we with went orange. out to dinner with Orange. Yeah. 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 They, it's nice. normally quite a nice meal. Yeah, it was okay. It was, uh, yeah. well... Only okay. It was all right. Orange can be what's this podcast going. Fish, so, um, Oh, it's heavy that's, on the that's fish, just, was that's it? That's just me. It probably was really good food. It's just, uh, oh, God, Nick was quite heavy okay. on the fish last night as well. You're not having a good run of luck, are you? Yeah, I mean, I, I can handle it. You can handle it. <laughs> uh, anything else? Any other little, before we sort of wrap it up, any other last thoughts about the show? I'm too spaced out, to be honest. Yeah, you're clear. ready to just yeah. call it a day. Yeah. Well, that's fair enough. Let's just call it, it a day, then. Let's call it a beer. You'd call it a beer, yeah. Mm. Look, look how I've been rationing my sad little yeah. plastic cup that's of beer. So you could sign off with a swig of it. Yeah, that's true, that's what I'll do. Whilst we just hold empty glasses. On that note. Plastic. Are we going to, oh yeah, we'll give a shout out. So we're, we're shooting this in a beer garden that seems to be sponsored by Salesforce. And they said we could do it. So thanks, Salesforce. Cheers for that. Um, and yeah, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Here's my last beer, as, as you just choreographed. Next time we'll be back in London, make sure you join us for that.